Hi everybody, this is Bentley the Compost Guy, Christy here again. And this is my fourth, I believe, update on my worm in feeding challenge. And if you've been following along, you'll know that I've been using this worm in flow through vermicomposting system. I'm just sort of panning down so you can see what exactly this thing looks like. Basically a hanging bag with a hole at the bottom where you can remove the vermicompost when it's ready. And my goal here has been to really put this system to the challenge, or put this system to the test rather, and to see what I can do with it. To see what I can get away with in terms of the amount of food that I can add. And it's been doing very, very well so far. The first week, you may recall that I added 25 pounds of food waste. And nothing disastrous has resulted. In my very first video I mentioned that I had been a bit careless with this system and that I had, I had uh, a bit of a, a fungus gnat population and I can see now that they are certainly doing just fine. What's kind of cool about this lid here is that it sort of zippers closed and when the lids closed you wouldn't even know that there was uh, a bit of an infestation just because they, it contains them very well but now that it's open they are flying around a bit. But anyhow, it's been a little while. Last week I was pretty busy and didn't get around to doing an update and I kind of just let the system mellow out. What I've been doing every day or every other day is adding a bit of water. I just wanted to keep the system nice and moist to help those worms do their thing. And you can see that the level has certainly continued to go down. I mean, we were, again, basically mounding up on the top there the last time last time I made a video. You can even see these these little sprouts growing up. Uh, those are probably cantaloupe or melon or something along those lines. And it's not uncommon to see various types of plants sprouting up in a in a vermicomposting system. Here's a garlic I believe. Something like that. So it's kind of funny seeing the little kind of garden you can get going in your your worm bin. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to add quite a lot more waste. It's actually 19.65 pounds to be exact. And the difference today is I've decided to start doing this properly. You know, for the last while I've just been kind of goofing around and throwing in any old thing and really, really bulky materials as you may recall. But today I, I took a bunch of waste outside and put it in a plastic garbage can and basically beat the crap out of it essentially. Just took a, uh, an ice chopper, ice shovel thing, and uh, pulverized it essentially. So the idea here, just sort of show you, it's this bucket full, same bucket I used last time, but you can see that the, the particle size is quite a bit smaller. It's not blended by any means, but I think it's going to be a really good size just because it will still allow a bit of airflow but at the same time, there's a lot more surface area for those microbes and for the worms to uh, go to work. And I think it's, it's certainly going to break down quite a bit more quickly than some of this chunky stuff that I've added. Now before I add that, what I did want to do, as I normally do, is just sort of dig around. You can see the white, lots and lots of little white guys. Those are springtails, and those are really, really... really really abundant in this system and I think they play a really important role in uh, helping the process along. They make a good partner to the worms. They tend to colonize materials that the worms don't really want to feed on right away. Things like orange peels and and other other materials that get some uh, nice fungal growth on them. The springtails seem to, to gravitate towards the fungi, so I like to have them together. You can see there's lots of worms up in the upper upper layers, which is to be expected. With all this food material that I've been adding, I've certainly been providing a, a nice habitat for, for these composting worms. This is exactly the, the type of situation that they're they're adapted for. So Lots and lots of worms, and as I dig around, very moist. Like I said, I've been adding 
quite a bit of, uh, of actual water. This is a system that can dry out relatively quickly, you know, in comparison to these enclosed plastic systems for sure. And that's a good thing. I mean, it's, it's airflow that we're, we uh, really like to have in our, in our, in our vermicomposting system. So it gets lots of airflow and that definitely helps to speed up the process and make it a more efficient process in general. All right, so lots of worms in there. I'm really eager to see what happens over the course of the next month or two as far as the uh, worm population goes. It'll be quite interesting to see how dense we can get these worms in this system. I suspect that uh, we'll have a pretty big mass of worms by the time uh, April rolls around. All right, so I got this bucket, and again, it's going to be a bit of a interesting maneuver. This is a lot heavier than the other one was. I think the last one was 10 pounds, if I remember correctly. But let's sort of see. You can see, like I said, it's been beat up quite a bit. So, and the other thing I did was I mixed in quite a lot of shredded cardboard and beat that in with the food waste. So we've got this nice fibrous material. And if any of you follow my uh, website, uh, redroomcomposting.com, you may be familiar with a, what I refer to as ho homemade manure. And this, this material right here is similar to that. The idea is to combine some sort of bedding material, fibrous stuff, and the food waste, and you end up with something that is sort of comparable to, to a manure, which is one of the, pretty well the best food for composting worms. They absolutely go crazy for, for livestock manure. Uh, horse manure in particular is a, a really great material. So just need to take a moment here and spread this out a bit. It's going to be interesting. You know, this, this smaller surface area stuff, the one advantage, aside from the advantages I mentioned already, is that I should be able to cram it in here a bit more easily and hopefully get all of it in. I'll be a little disappointed in myself if I can't even get the full 19.65 19, 19 pounds in. So you can't say I didn't try, right? Okay. So... Oh, this is going to be really interesting. <laughs> nice view you had there of the bucket. All right. This is... Uh, okay, we lost probably a gram or two there. And hopefully this... this I'm almost more concerned about the uh, these little hooks here holding out than I am about adding all this material because this is a really, really heavy system right now. But it does look like I've been successful here. So, this is going to be interesting. Again, there's lots of bedding in there, so I'm quite confident. I don't have to worry about anything going haywire with this system. And I'm actually not going to be able to add anything for a while. I'm certainly not going to be adding any more in the next few days. And I'm going to be away for a little bit, so... I'm going to let this sort of chill out, mellow out for a while, and probably touch base again in another 12 days or so. But it should be quite interesting to see what happens. I'm going to put a bit of bedding on top, and I may add some more uh, moisture over the next few days, just to make sure we got lots of worm-friendly uh, habitat up top here. All right, so that's basically where we're at. Everything's coming along nicely. And yeah, I'll certainly have some more updates for you. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, my name is Bentley the Compost Guy Christie. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.